In this section, we'll take a look at how cost of goods sold is calculated for a merchandising company and a manufacturing company. If you remember from Accounting 1, we get cost of goods sold from our inventory account. So we have our inventory T account, and what, ha what the inventory T account consists of is a beginning balance. Purchases of inventory increase your inventory balance. Don't forget, freight in on purchases is included in the cost of your inventory. So freight in and um, the cost of what you purchased increases your inventory balance. Then we do have an ending balance that represents your um, inventory in hand at the end of the year or end of the period. And then we have cost of goods sold, which decreases your inventory account. As, goods, as inventory is sold to customers, the cost of the inventory that is sold decreases your inventory account and we call that cost of goods sold. If you remember from accounting one, the journal entry is that we debit our cost of goods sold account and we credit our inventory. A lot of your accounting problems will give three of the four unknown elements and will ask you to calculate the fourth. So, you should know that beginning balance of purchases is equal to cost of goods sold plus the ending balance of inventory. So if they ask you to calculate cost of goods sold, how would you do that? Cost of goods sold is equal to beginning balance plus purchases minus your ending inventory. Now let's take a look at cost of goods sold for a manufacturer. The income statement for a manufacturer is identical to that of a merchandiser. However, the way that we calculate cost of goods sold for a manufacturing company is very different from the way we calculate um, cost of goods sold for a merchandising company. But why is it different? A manufacturer and a merchandiser both have inventory, but they have different types of inventory. A merchandiser only has one type of inventory. It's what we call merchandise inventory. They buy it from others in order to resell it to customers. A manufacturing company, on the other hand, has three types of inventory. They have raw material inventory, work in process inventory, and finished goods inventory. So we have to understand how this inventory flows through the manufacturer in order to calculate our cost of goods sold. So in order to calculate cost of goods sold for manufacturer, we have to start with our raw materials inventory T account. So let's take a look at our raw materials inventory T account. Raw materials inventory account has a beginning balance of raw materials. Purchases of raw materials increase that raw material inventory account. Again, don't forget, if you pay any freight in to buy that raw materials inventory, those have to be added to your purchase price and that would be the total of your purchases for raw materials inventory. So what would decrease raw material inventory? Every time we use up raw materials to produce goods, so every time we request raw materials to start production, that decreases our raw materials inventory. So direct materials used, sometimes you would get indirect materials used also reducing your raw materials inventory. But to keep it simple, let's say direct materials used reduces raw materials inventory. And then whatever is remaining at the end of the period is the ending balance of your raw materials inventory. So to summarize, your raw material inventory account has a beginning balance. You add purchases to it. Direct materials used up decreases inventory. And then whatever is remaining is your ending balance of raw material inventory. Also, you will need to know some more um, terminology. Whenever I look at beginning balance plus purchases of raw materials, we would call that materials available for use. Now let's look at the direct materials used. Where do those go? When direct materials are used up, that means we have started our manufacturing process. We have started producing these goods. So they go to our work in process inventory. Once direct materials are being used up, they are already in work in process. So these direct materials used get transferred to your work in process inventory. So for your journal entry purposes, what you're doing when you use up direct materials is you are debiting your work in process inventory account and crediting your raw materials inventory account. Basically, you're transferring your direct materials from your raw materials to your work in process. Again, to summarize, your beginning balance of inventory plus any purchases equal 
your materials used, direct materials used, plus your ending balance. So if you were asked to calculate how much direct materials used was, you should be able to say that direct materials used is equal to your beginning balance plus purchases minus your ending balance. And you use the same methodology for all your inventory accounts. Now let's take a look at our work in process inventory account. Work in process inventory T account also has a beginning balance of work in process inventory. What that represents is incomplete goods that were left remaining at the end of the last period. So those are beginning work in process inventory. That's incomplete goods at the beginning of the period. Whatever you start into production has three components. You have direct materials that you use. Remember this came from your uh, raw materials inventory account. To direct materials, what do you add? You add labor costs. So you have to work on those materials. So you have direct labor costs that go into your work in process inventory account. You also have manufacturing overhead. The cost of electricity, utilities, rent, depreciation, all that increases your work in process inventory as you keep manufacturing those products. So direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead increased your work in process inventory. What decreases your work in process inventory? Whenever you're done with the product, when you've completely manufactured the product and it's finished, what happens? It gets transferred out to your finished goods inventory waiting for it to be sold. So the cost of goods manufactured reduces your work in process inventory and it gets transferred out to finished goods inventory. Whatever is remaining on the account is your ending work in process inventory and that represents the value of incomplete goods. They have some direct materials, some direct labor, and some manufacturing overhead components. So ending work in process again represents incomplete goods at the end of the accounting period. More terminology. The beginning work in process plus direct materials used plus direct labor plus manufacturing overhead is called total manufacturing costs to account for. The sum of all those four items, we have to account for those costs. How do we account for them? We account for them by transferring the whatever has been finished and transferred out to finished goods and the balance is in ending work in process. So the cost of goods manufactured gets transferred out to our finished goods inventory account. So let's now take a look at our finished goods inventory T account. Again, finished goods inventory T account will have a beginning balance of finished goods. These represent finished items that were not sold at the end of the last period. Our cost of goods manufactured increase our finished goods inventory. So whatever goods that we manufactured during the current period increase our finished goods inventory. What decreases it? Whenever we sell it. So cost of goods sold decreases our finished goods inventory and then the remaining balance is our ending balance of finished goods inventory. So we have to go through three T accounts to figure out our cost of goods sold for a manufacturer. The manufacturer's finished goods inventory again consists of beginning balance plus cost of goods manufactured minus cost of goods sold equals our ending balance of finished goods. So if you look at the finished goods inventory account for a manufacturer, it is what's similar to the merchandise inventory account of a merchandiser. The cost of goods manufactured is kind of like the cost of purchases for a merchandiser. We need to look at more terminology. One more thing. The beginning balance plus cost of goods manufactured is called cost of goods available for sale. Again, your beginning balance of finished goods inventory plus cost of goods manufactured is sometimes called cost of goods available for sale. Basically, if you had 100 items in your beginning balance inventory and you manufactured 1,000 items this year, you have 1,100 available for sale. And then if we sold 700 items, you would have 400 more remaining in your ending inventory. As you know, cost of goods sold is what appears on the manufacturer's income statement. Finally, let's take a look at the differences between 
the balance sheets of the three types of company. The service company has no inventory accounts. A merchandiser has one inventory account, which is called merchandise inventory, and a manufacturer has three types of inventory accounts, the raw materials inventory, work in process inventory, and finished goods inventory. So if you take a balance sheet and you notice that uh, the balance sheet doesn't have inventory, you know that it's a service company. If you look at that and if you look at a balance sheet and you see that the company has three types of inventory or two types of inventory, you know that it is a manufacturer. Be sure to know the differences and similarities between the financial statements of the three types of companies as well as what components are there in the T accounts as well as the flow of data from um, of inventory within a manufacturer. Be sure to know how to calculate cost of goods sold because all those could be questions that you are asked in an exam or um, in a quiz.